All right. Thanks so much, everyone, for sticking with it today and yesterday. We have had some amazing talks. My name is Emily Fox. I'm a security engineer at Apple, and I am here to close out the Global Security Vulnerability Summit, or GSVIS, as we have affectionately been calling it. Um, so to get started, Brandon said yesterday that we must, as a community, work towards developing new solutions and adapting current ones to work with the current landscape. Since then, we've learned all, all about the current landscape, as well as the past and how we got to where we are now. You all have shared with us some amazing projects, some very fascinating and interesting research you're working on, great ideas, and again, a little bit more of that history, the, the deeper knowledge about how we got here. So speaking of history, um, I want to kind of give you all some background about like why Global Security Vulnerability Summit? Why are you all here? Why am I talking to you? Um, towards the end of 2021, Brandon, myself, and Aradna Chital had the pleasure of meeting the Cloud Security Alliance to discuss some of the overlaps in the Cloud Native Computing Foundation's Security Technical Advisory Group and Cloud Security Alliance's work. Um, it was in that meeting that we pitched the idea of a summit because we've all been climbing the same, am I affected by this vulnerability mountain since CVEs first came out. And quite frankly, not a lot has actually changed. SBOM has just started to make a bigger splash. We're starting to hear more and more talks about it and see more and more projects and companies look at leveraging it and delivering that. And also around that time, Long for Shell had not yet ruined everyone's evenings and weekends throughout the end of the year and the weeks following. In the time since CVEs were first introduced in 1999, the era of dot-com had had ended and cloud computing was rising up. And now where we are today is we have so many services everywhere and apps that make our lives just a little bit better or in some cases even more frustrating. And all of these things have problems in them. They have vulnerabilities, but vulnerabilities are still very much the same except now there's a lot more of them. We felt we needed to push for change in the vulnerability ecosystem. We suspected that folks were working on problems but didn't quite have a platform to share what it is that they're doing to come together to get more contributors to drive interest. So here we are at the end of two very fantastic days of information sharing, talking, learning, and of course, complaining. And I know for myself, I have personally learned a lot. Like there are some brilliant effort on, efforts underway from the global security database to VEX and everything in between and everything around them. We've had security researchers talk in the same room as software engineers, two usually very separate fields, but they all have a common task before them and it's vulnerabilities, vulnerabilities, they bring us all together. Um, but what we need is each of you, regardless if you're a hacker or you can sing, sling some code like the world depends on it, and in some cases it does, we need you to contribute your time, your knowledge, your expertise, your code, even your leadership to be successful in changing the things that cause us to miss our family dinners, work extra hours, and increase our stress and burnout. It has to change and it needs to get better because we're going to keep finding more and more vulnerabilities and they're going to continue popping up outside of normal means. They're gonna occur in places where we don't traditionally think they should be, which requires us to be flexible in expressing the information about them. CVEs introduced in 1999 were traditionally for software that was packaged and you can buy it off of a shelf and now you can download it or just interact with it through a web service. We need to also automate how we remediate them because today it's too manual and it takes too much time. This requires us to build for our needs in a way that allows us to adapt and change as we learn more, taking those small risks as Anne said in, on day one, because we're still gonna be asking ourselves the same question tomorrow, am I affected? But when we stop asking it, it's going to be because of all the great efforts we heard about here today. And then I'm going to ask you, what is our next question that we're going to be asking? We began exploring that question and others in yesterday's Birds of a Feather session. For those of you that couldn't make it, you were sorely missed, but there's still time for you to help out.
We talked about some of the challenges in the identification of vulnerabilities, not necessarily the IDs themselves, rather that there is still a lot of ambiguity in reporting and even receiving an ID, that we still need humans to understand and contextualize the information about those vulnerabilities that are being found and reported. But we need it to be expressed in such a way that we can automate answering the question of am I affected? Because the next question we're going to ask ourselves is where? So as Brandon mentioned in the beginning of this event, we're pulling folks together to scope and solve some of these issues that have been brought up both in the Birds of a Feather session and during the course of this summit. So disclaimer, there's a QR code and it's a security conference. Uh, we've got a kickoff scheduled for Monday, July 11th at 3 p.m. Eastern and 12 noon Pacific. You are invited to join us. I would love to see you all there. While our first goal of this group is to discuss and document these ideas and problems, we want to also solve them. And that'll mean working with some of you here today to continue your work and others that we haven't had a chance to meet yet. And to start some of these projects that fill in those gaps or contribute to the ones that have already started. Because we're just at the first peak of changing the vulnerability ecosystem and we haven't yet reached the summit. I want to thank all of our speakers, all of those that are both present online and in person, to those that submitted CFPs, and everyone that has been working on this, either program committee, or if you're watching this on YouTube later and you're hearing about all of this, I want to thank you as well, because I hope to see you again. If you love this summit, please provide feedback so we can have another one, so we can continue these great conversations and learn about the progress that's going on. Thank you all so much for your time, and I hope to see you on Monday, July 11th. Have a wonderful day and a wonderful weekend, and be safe.